Hello and welcome to Vodcast 13.4. In this video podcast, I will overview atmospheric circulation and global distribution of precipitation. Let's start off by considering how global air circulation would occur if Earth didn't spin. A non-spinning Earth would actually have a really simple airflow mechanism. We should start off by noting that solar energy will be far more concentrated at the equator than it is at the poles. So we should expect air at the equator to get quite hot, whereas air near the poles will be quite cold. I've stressed this in so many vodcasts, but I'm going to stress it once more. Warm air tends to rise because it's less dense than its surroundings. So if we start heating up pockets of air near the surface, they will become less dense and they will rise vertically upward. Now when that happens near the equator, there will be low pressure at the surface. Because if air is leaving that region, the air pressure has to decrease in that region. Now with the poles where it's much cooler, you won't have rising air, you'll have subsiding air. And with subsiding air, you'll have a high pressure region. And remember, if Earth isn't spinning, we do not need to account for the Coriolis effect. So in terms of surface flow, the winds would blow from the poles towards the equator. But here's the thing, Earth does spin. Now hopefully some of the concepts that we've overviewed in previous podcasts in this chapter will help you understand what's going on in this image. In the northern hemisphere, you should notice that all of the winds are deflected to the right due to the Coriolis effect. But let's start off by focusing on the equator. Because at the equator we have what's known as the equatorial low pressure belt. Just as was the case in our previous image, there's a lot of incoming solar radiation that will cause heating to occur. And now remember, with low pressure zones we're talking about converging winds. And if you take a look at the northeast trade winds and the southeast trade winds, they are converging towards the equator. Because remember, if we're talking about a low pressure region, air wants to flow towards the lowest pressure region it can. And in this region of our planet, that happens to be at the equatorial low. But the other thing we need to know about low pressure regions is that we're going to see air rising. So due to the fact that there's a lot of warm, moist air near the equator, and due to the fact that converging winds and surface heating are causing air to rise, we will see a lot of cloud formation near the equatorial low pressure zone. That's why most of our planet's rainforests occur near the equator. There will be ample rainfall in this region. Now as that air near the equatorial low works its way up into the atmosphere, you will see adiabatic cooling occurring, you will see cloud formation occurring, and a lot of the moisture that was contained in that air will fall back to Earth as precipitation. So the remaining air after all that's occurred will be rather dry. Now notice what's happening aloft as the air works its way back towards the poles. That cool, dry air will subside at the 30 degree latitude. And when that air subsides, it will adiabatically heat. Because if you remember back to last chapter, adiabatic cooling occurs when air rises, but adiabatic heating will occur with descending air because that air is being compressed. So at the subtropical highs, where you'll see descending dry air, you find most of the world's major deserts. Keep in mind that high pressure is typically associated with fair weather and sunny conditions, because in high pressure regions at Earth's surface, you're not seeing convergence occurring, so you're not gonna see a whole lot of air lifting and forming clouds. I'd like to now turn your attention to the mid-latitude region, which basically includes most of the continental United States and a large portion of Canada. The prevailing winds for us in the mid-latitude regions are the westerlies, and that's why most weather systems in the United States will work their way from west to east across our continent. But let me now put all this information together in a nice summarized fashion. The regions that are influenced by high pressure will experience relatively dry conditions. And as previously stated, most of Earth's deserts are at or near the subtropical high pressure latitudes of 30 degrees. But regions that are influenced by low pressure will receive ample precipitation. Your tropical regions at or near the equatorial low are the rainiest regions on Earth. And I hope that all the concepts that we've overviewed up to this point in this chapter have helped you make sense of the picture you see on this slide. At the end of our previous podcast, I talked about the relationship between what happens near the surface and what's happening aloft. And this image also reinforces that idea as well. Because if you look at the equatorial low pressure region, we see convergence at the surface as we should near a low pressure zone. But if you look at what's happening high up in the atmosphere, we see divergence aloft. Those blue arrows are moving away from each other, with one going towards the North Pole and one going towards the South Pole. At our high pressure zones, we should see divergence near the surface, and we do if you focus in on these two arrows here, but we should see convergence aloft, and the two blue arrows indicated here are showing us convergence aloft. Our last consideration in this video podcast are the factors that influence global precipitation. 
Now, as mentioned on the previous slide, low pressure regions will receive ample precipitation and high pressure regions will often see dry conditions. But other factors that we have to consider are the nature of the air. Keep in mind that warm air has a higher moisture capacity than cold air because as overviewed in the humidity vodcast, the water vapor content needed for saturation is temperature dependent. The warmer the air, the more water vapor needed to reach saturation. So in warmer regions, say near the equator, the air will be capable of holding a lot of water vapor. And when that air that contains a lot of water vapor is forced aloft due to convergence, there will be ample precipitation near that low pressure region. However, as you work your way up towards the poles where the air is colder, the air simply doesn't have the capacity for water vapor that it would in a warmer region. The bullet point overviewing latitude kind of reinforces all the same things I just talked about. But another factor that influences global precipitation is the distribution of continents and oceans. Especially in the northern hemisphere where there is a lot of land mass, you tend to see a lot less precipitation towards the centers of those land masses. Mountains can also have an impact on precipitation patterns. Your windward mountain slopes will tend to receive more precipitation than your leeward mountain slopes. And our Sierra Nevada mountains, which we talked about in previous podcasts, are a great example of just that. Okay, that concludes this video podcast. In our next podcast, I will overview local winds.